Well, it's been a great journey, hasn't it? We followed a journalist as he uncovered the horrible truth behind the galaxy's greatest hero and were horrified as his life was turned upside down by that truth. Then we learned the truth about someone we thought we could trust and saw as she began to question everything she once believed. It has been a real trip. On Monday, that trip came to a close with the sixth and final episode of Season 2 of Hunt the Truth. I've been saying since the beginning that each episode just seems to get better and better, and while I'm still not sure whether or not this episode broke that combo, it was certainly a jaw-dropper and even a bit of a mindfuck. As I mentioned last week, this week will definitely have its share of Halo 5 spoilers. We'll be discussing the main plot of the game towards the end of the discussion, so if you haven't finished the game and don't want it spoiled, turn away now. For everyone else, this is the season finale of Hunt the Truth. As one would assume, we pick up right where the last episode left off. The Guardian on Laika 3 is about to awaken. The ground is shaking, gravity is going crazy, and Maya and Mashak are caught in the middle of it all. Thankfully, Bostwick shows up with a warthog. They pile in and head straight towards the city, though not yet sure what to do. Mashak makes a quip about how they don't have a giant fire alarm to pull, which reminds BB of the Covenant air raid system. He figures if they can reach the shuttle port on the edge of the city, he can override the city AI, spoof a Covenant attack, and initiate the air raid and evacuation systems. Now, cool as all that is, it just makes me wonder, why the hell hasn't Oni thought to do this? There's an emergency alert system in place, why not use it? People are dying! But suddenly, the group is cut off by a pelican full of the UNSC's finest. BB naturally suggests going along with them, but Maya knows what happens if she does. Before they can argue any further, however, a missile strikes the pelican. The source? The unkillable Ilsa Zane and her NCA followers. The group takes the opportunity to get going and make their way to the shuttle port, all around them gravity going haywire. When they finally reach the port, BB reveals his true plan, getting them off the planet. While he actually could have overridden the colony AI and activated the Covenant air raid system, he lied to get them to the shuttle port, likely hoping to give Maya no other choice. With the ground breaking, NCA and UNSC fighting in the streets, it seems like there is nothing left to do. However, Bostwick reminds Maya of what happened after the previous events, how Oni just covered things up. Maya. Pharaoh decides to stay, to broadcast what's happening as it happens, to make people aware of what Oni is covering up. Sounds a little like a former journalist we knew, right? Bibi protests Maya's decision and tries to convince her that putting the truth out there would only make the situation worse. He also notes that, like on Conrad's point, the anomaly would wipe out any text she might use to make a broadcast. However, Bibi had forgotten about Ari. On Conrad's point, he had used low-tech radio waves to break through the interference. Maya plans to do the same, hoping to have Bostwick and Mashak fly high enough to avoid the EMP the anomaly gives off, but low enough to pick up Maya's transmission and relay it to the galaxy at large. Of course, Bostwick decides to stay with Maya. BB-2 would be forced to stay. He is but a lapel. After a little protest, Mashak finally takes the shuttlecraft and heads off-world to await Maya's transmission. Maya and Bostwick, meanwhile, head up to the port's tower control. BB tries one last time to dissuade Maya, but Bostwick keeps her going. Once in the control tower, Maya makes her final transmission. After relating what's happening to Laika 3, what had happened to so many other colonies, Maya prepares to reveal the truth about herself. Before she can, however, the ground starts to rise. The Guardian, as we know it to be, is finally emerging. Maya does her best to describe this massive construct before it sends out a pulse, a familiar event if you've played Halo 5. The control tower is hit, glass shattered, and suddenly, a gunshot goes off. Bostwick had shot the radio equipment. When Maya asks why, Bostwick explains that the only way for any of this to work is if Pharaoh dies, becoming a martyr for the cause, her legacy as a hero cemented in death. Maya, after a moment of consideration, realizes that Bostwick was right. After some hesitation and with Maya's permission, Bostwick finally pulls the trigger, shooting Maya. She falls through the shattered window and rushes towards the ground. And she dies. Maya, our narrator, our hero, dies. Suddenly, Bibi's voice comes on, asking the voice of Maya if she remembers anything else. Somehow, Bibi is interviewing a dead woman. The whole series has been something of a flashback, Bibi sifting through the memories of former agent Maya Sankar, the episodes themselves, reports filed to Admiral Saren Osman, documenting Maya's defection and the final days of her life. The Hunt the Truth website, which we can see has been taken over by Oni since the start of Season 2, is not public-facing, but exclusive to Oni 3 personnel, as it states. In the first season, we were the viewers, the average citizens, listening in to Benjiro's broadcasts. In season two, we're Oni agents listening into reports filed by the AI Black Box. Very ostentatious reports, but reports nonetheless. The episode, the season, ends with BB reporting that Maya's brain had been recovered following the event of Laika 3 on October 28th, and him recommending using Maya's brain for the creation of an AI. 
so she's not yet an AI, but sort of in a state of limbo between what she was and what she will become. And that concludes Hunt the Truth Season 2, and what a conclusion! I just, it's been a few days now and I'm still processing everything, listening to that episode again and again and god damn 343, damn! But now, we move on to the Halo 5 connections and the spoiler-heavy material. At the start of the series, five colonies had been hit by unknown events. The first episode takes place around the time of the start of Halo 5, or just before. No definitive date has yet been given for when Halo 5 starts, however we are given a date for the events on Meridian in Halo 5, October 25th. Seems only took a couple days to decide whether or not to declare the Chief dead. By the time Maya and Bibi get to Conrad's point, the Chief had been declared dead, putting their arrival at October 27th. As we learn in Halo 5, by October 27th, five more colonies not including Meridian had been hit, putting the total at 11. And on October 27th itself, Fireteam Osiris were deployed to Sun Helios, seeking the Arbiter's help in hunting down the Master Chief. And then, a day later, Maya is on Leica 3, watching a Guardian emerge from the ground as it happened so many times before. Now, let's talk about the end of Halo 5. The basic plot is that Cortana had accessed the Domain, been cured of her rampancy, and is now taking on the task of reclamation for the created, aka AI. She's awakening Guardians, once used by the Forerunners to force peace in the outskirts of the Ecumene, and now plans to do the same. The game ends with Cortana calling to her fellow AI, offering them a chance to cure their rampancy if they join her. Given BB's status as an AI and Maya about to come one, it really makes you wonder what might come to pass as the Reclaimer saga continues, never mind the potential connections to Saint's testimony. Just, God, there's so much that could potentially happen and I'm so excited to start diving into it all in the years leading up to the next entry in the Reclaimer saga. For now, however, this is where we have to cut the discussion off. It's just too early to get into much more than what I've already said, too much information too fast, and as I'm sure many would agree, we need time to really process it all. Well, thanks for watching, as always. I hope you guys enjoyed this season of Hunt the Truth along with my video breakdowns. I really hope 343 and Eisenberg get to work together in the future, be it for Hunt the Truth or some other super special awesome marketing campaign. I'd love to see something leading up to Halo Wars 2. For now though, this has been Halo Cannon, and let me welcome you all to the Transcendence. The Reclamation is here. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.